it was it was giving me hints it was telling me hey welcome back to freedom one garage it's a beautiful day today we're in the shop and i want to take a moment to do kind of a special intro for this video because it's going to be a montage of our trials and tribulations with the to 30 in regards to fuel and air and spark i'll be honest with you right now mistakes were made but it's hey that's what we're here for to help share with you the good and bad so hopefully to help you out if you ever find yourself with one of these old tractors for the first time and you got to sort through some drivability stuff so i hope you enjoy this if we didn't cut it down just into snippets to show you each little step we took it would have been way too long but again the process was pretty unique and comical at times you might say so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and liking our videos let's get to the content Good morning. Walking to the shop. Past old glory. It's a nice morning. Kind of cold. 30, I don't know, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 degrees, 30 something. A little chilly. We're going to head to the shop. Um, right in the town. Got some spark plugs for the tractor. Gonna throw some fresh plugs. What? Are you following me? Are you following me? Come on, let's go. <laughs> You're goofy. Come on. Yeah, take your time. Yeah. Mackie, you're such a silly boy. You're such a silly boy. Let's go. Come on, bud. And in the shop we go. No? He's gonna stay out and play for a little bit. But we got Mary in the shop today. Hi, sweetie. Oh, she says, I'll hang out with you, Dad. Yeah. Find something for you to lay on, maybe, huh? Anyway, we came over to get the tub of recycling emptied. And I remembered last night after we finished off the last video, went in the house. Um, I didn't turn the fuel off. On these old machines, it's a good idea, and a lot of them have an opportunity and an option for you to turn fuel off when they're not in use. I did not. So, uh, the tractor does not leak any oil or anything, but it had maybe hmm, a quart of gas <laughs> um, had leaked out of the carburetor, and this, Here's your carburetor, of course. This tube had been filling up with gas overnight. This is your fresh air intake. And it was leaking then out of this air intake hose connection and also out of the bowl drain fitting. So, it came with a carburetor. We're gonna go ahead and throw it on. I was trying to do a little bit of a justimalizing on this one yesterday. And it was being a little weird anyway, so um, really makes sense to just go ahead and try this uh, Chinese carburetor that came in the box. So we're gonna do that, and we got some spark plugs for it, and we'll see. We might we might just get this thing running even better than it already has been. Boy, and here's seven sixteenths. Moved this guy off a couple times. I'll also show you. We put. Uh, I don't know if I got a good look on it before, but we put a newer style flow through filter between the tank and the carb. I think I mentioned it, but I'm not sure I showed y'all. You can get gas seeping here. This exhaust is right in the way. we're gonna end up is uh, 
we're gonna end up with a 70 year old made in Detroit fun fact uh, the Ferguson Harris Ferguson tractor factory was in Detroit Michigan that's about as American as it gets but uh, where was I going with that I start seeing something that I yeah we're gonna end up with a we're gonna end up with a 70 year old American made tractor about as American as you can get it and uh, it's going to be rolling with a look at that look at all that fuel there we go going to be rolling with a Chinese carburetor and a Our choke lever. Chinese carburetor and a sorry, I'm getting sidetracked because I'm trying to think and use my brain for more than one thing at a time and I'm not good at that. There we go. Chinese carburetor is where we're gonna end. A uh, intake made in Taiwan, a clutch assembly made in Taiwan. And uh, yeah, who knows what else? There we are. <coughs> As you saw in the up other video, apparently an upside down four is the Chinese word for carburetor. So, what do we got here? We've got, it's even got a gasket. It's not brass, so it doesn't have the cool factor. We did get a gasket. And we've got a carburetor that's fairly clean. Uh, I wonder. So here's our two castings. Looks like everything works the same. What I'm going to do is, because this goes on when this is installed, the idle adjusting the idle speed adjusting screws on the back side of the carburetor. This one, the factory one, has a really cool wing nut. This one, when it's mounted like this, has a flathead screwdriver like you'd see on most cars and stuff. So, I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna try to already mess with this new carburetor. Okay, you're not gonna believe this. <coughs> I had to move you over to, blend, to the bench. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start giving the Taiwan, the makers of this new carburetor in Taiwan, a little bit of credit because I was able to take the throttle shaft and butterfly assembly out of the old carburetor and it fits perfectly in the Taiwan carburetor. Um, I mean, I would have never thought in a million years that they would have made the shaft bore, the intake bore, exactly the same. But so far, I'm pretty impressed. Now, we're going to try and do the same thing with the choke lever because I cannot make this guy work. Um, at the very least, we're going to have to drill this out or do something different here. Be able to do the same thing with this. Oh, we got to... got our old shaft in the new choke bore we'll clean up the I'm be pretty excited if this all works out as planned here that's gonna work and then throttle magnificent I would have never guessed you guys AE power um, aka upside down four or 
crazy written lowercase h. Um, yeah, when you're out you searching the interwebs for carburetors and you come across this brand and you think, should I spring for that for my old tractor or whatever? You might want to consider it because, you know, we got to throw this on and see if it actually carburetes now. But otherwise, pretty happy. Let's get the fuel inlet in here real quick. And we'll be ready to rock and roll here. Push down, and then we can push. Uh oh, uh oh, oh! You failed me. You only had one thing to do left to do. Are you kidding me? Oh, I take everything back immediately. Studs there. Studs there. See that difference in width? This guy will not go through the holes in the flange on the intake manifold. I think we can fix that. We can drill them out a little bit bigger to where this guy will take. Okay, we're good there. Before, let's see, we gotta go, this is way out. Our initial setting on this. Uh, main jet here is half, one, and I think like an eighth. We're gonna go one and a quarter. Our initial setting on this. I don't have a screwdriver small enough, we'll have to get the book. It was 7 eighths. And half and almost one. That's 7 eighths ish, is eighties is. Carburetor done. Now I did get spark plugs this morning too, so we're gonna throw a set of plugs in it real quick and then fire it up. Okay, moment of truth. A couple moments of truth. Give it just a little bit of throttle. A little choke. Mission on. leaking out of the carb hmm okay I have a feeling maybe we choked her a little hard and that's why we had a little fuel fuel drip all right, well, um, after taking the carburetor off and putting it back on, 
taking it back off fiddling around with you know we took some of the old bits and put them in the new carburetor and vice versa <laughs> we ended up uh, what had happened was uh, the butterfly for the main um, throttle uh, opening bore was not closing all the way it would not let um, the idle circuit and the engine create enough of an updraft because what happens in these carburetors these updraft <laughs> hashtag updraft life uh, fuel goes into a bowl and then a needle this is your main jet here and it just basically comes out of the bowl and enters this area here and the vacuum of the engine is uh, relied upon to get the fuel vapor up into the engine so if you're not getting good vacuum or you got a leak or some of the passages aren't covered or uncovered like they're supposed to the updraft does not work so what we ended up doing though uh, I still got to use the old throttle shaft and believe it or not the the butterfly or the throttle plate then screwed into the old shaft it closed and opened and the gaps were appropriate it would come down and cover those uh, idle circuits and stuff and uh, life was pretty good so we're on uh, lights burned out of course but this is where we're at feel really good about the engine now we got new plugs carburetors on I am gonna go ahead and shut the fuel off because I don't want that to happen again and uh, we're we're in a good place we're in a really really good place with this machine so let's get this off there so that's how you take parts from a 21st century Asian carburetor from Taiwan and a 20th century 70 year old American carburetor from Detroit and make it work on your old 70 year old tractor so you know and it just goes to show you you got to try things hey in the meantime though there is one thing we need I need or we we need a 16 by 6 Firestone Champion three rib tire. This one's in really good shape. This old nasty tire is old and nasty. So we're looking for another Firestone to put on this side. Um, we might end up having to buy a new one. I just don't want it to look really dorky. And, you know, I'd like to have it nice. You know, just nice. We got updates. They're not good updates, unfortunately. So, remember, <laughs> yeah, so much for ending the video there. Remember when I was telling you all the accolades of AE power upside down Ford carburetor and really it was all things considered pretty painless experience. Well, last night, Ran the tractor a lot yesterday. Ran it all the way down the road a mile or so and back. Ran great. Last night, put it away. I remembered to turn the fuel off. Came in today and turned the fuel on. Went to start the dang tractor. Fuel pours out of the carburetor again. So, uh, tippy tap with the hammer. That doesn't fix it. The needle and seat are not shutting for whatever reason carb came off again 
So now, if you follow along, we're, we've got this Frankenstein of old parts and new parts, but fairly well working carburetor. Pull it apart. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. Those are the floats. These are the floats right here. Out of the new AE upside down four carburetor. They're full of fuel. They don't float. So they're junk. And now I'm starting to regret even trying to Frankenstein these things. Because look, I mean, you want to talk about build quality. Look at the solder just gobbed on there I mean leaking out like the floats leaking fuel right now so there's a hole down here somewhere so these are junk so I pull once again let's let's go to our parts carburetor this is going to be more 70 year old carburetor than new carburetor here pretty soon but look at the quality here we've got nice um, I guess you would call those like like panel welds or spot welds holding these on you don't see gobs of solder gushing out and gobbed up all over the place so we're putting these floats back into new carburetor and we'll see where it gets us cross your fingers because i about had it with this dang thing okay i think we're good again literally 10 minutes later a little bit on a hot idle and I wonder if that wasn't those floats starting to fill up already and making things a little rich hey guys it's been a couple days I apologize for tagging this on to a video that's already pretty dang long I know it's gonna be long but I wanted to update you and let you know about a couple things number one I was singing praises about the upside down for AE power Chinese carburetor um, we did have to do a little tweak to it here and there to get it work with our linkages and stuff like that. Uh, and then it ran okay and then it didn't. And the more we investigated and the more we tweaked on it, well, let's just say here's what's left of the upside down for Chinese carburetor. It it's junk plastic venturi that's what finally ended up being a problem was we got it running with the chinese carburetor but it was a nice day it was like 70 degrees ran it up and down the road in road gear um all had all kinds of fun but this is the heartland the next day or a couple days later it was like 30 degrees would not start for nothing what we found out was the warmer air was making it easier for the fuel to mix properly with the air and get to the, to the cylinders however in the cold air that carburetor wasn't getting it done uh, so what we ended up doing <laughs> we actually went the other direction and we robbed a couple parts out of the Chinese carburetor, really just the needle and seat and a couple screws for a butterfly because one of the one of the uh, originals was stripped out. Uh, but we threw the needle and seat into the original. Uh, they call them a Schabler Marvin Schabler, something like that. Uh, I'll 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 put a I'll put the words in. Uh, rebuilt this one on the bench. Uh, used the gasket from the Chinese one and now we're in a good spot um, <laughs> Lessons learned it runs so much better with the factory carburetor um, Idles better. It's way more responsive to adjustment whether it's idle air 
or the the main um, main mixture screw so we're in good shape we're back running and then so I got excited about changing spark plugs because it has champion I think they were yeah d16 spark plugs in it um, they were pretty well suited up not horrible but pretty well suited up <laughs> suited up sorry so I did some interweb research and boy I tell you guys and gals on the old uh, Ferguson pages and Ford 8 in and 8 ins and 9 ins which are very similar they were ranting and raving about this 3116 plug Autolite 3116 so I bought four of them put the factory carburetor on now we could see that we had a really nice air fuel mixture in the cylinders but we couldn't generate a good enough spark to ignite it so now what are we doing you know this is what happens by the way when you do three or four different things at once to kind of try and correct one issue is you might make more issues but in the end i mean we checked coil um we went through all the wiring front on the 12 volt uh, uh, system upgrade with the alternator and in the end finally got to the point where I said you know what let's throw these old spark plugs in and just see popped off runs like a champ so <laughs> yeah each one of these tractors I'm quickly learning from from reading and research and stuff like that each one of these dang things has a mind of its own uh, when it comes to air fuel mix carburetor and ignition and just because one thing works in one person's tractor doesn't mean it's going to do you a dang bit of good so out with the 3116 there's a waste of 12 dollars we'll keep them around in case we need them down the road uh we cleaned up the stock ones that have been in there for who knows how long and she runs like a champ so let's give you a little start. I kind of explained all that. The intake's okay. Everything's happy. Yep. That's the way it ought to be. I tell you it was two or three days of just beating your head against the wall and the tractor and everything else before we finally found the magic touch it's running running like a champ i did i just wanted to get you up to speed because i didn't want to leave you hanging and everybody that watches this video going out and buying this carburetor because do not leaky floats won't idle won't mix air fuel right just avoid it get a kit get a good kit for your tractor factory carburetor where do we find ours at tractor supply and bomb cars and bomb cars and tractor supply tractor stores yeah uh they have the stuff you need just do a little research get the good stuff and fix what you got because that's what it was meant to run off of hey we made it home from the christmas light tractor parade it's been about two hours removing binder clamps and zip ties and tape and other things off of this Ooh, i forgot we got to take these two little brackets off where we had our battery packs attached to our wheels for our wheel lights but uh if you watched that video we had a little bit of an issue it started dying on the way home and figured out luckily uh that our gas cap i replaced the gas cap and it was too good apparently i don't i don't know i can't 
I just wanted it better, but either way, once we loosen that up, the, the fuel tank must have been creating a vacuum, not letting this. It's just a gravity feed fuel system. There's no pump or nothing, so once it creates a vacuum in the fuel tank, it won't feed the car. But we got it home, and it sat overnight. I haven't touched it. We, I think, we got to sort out this starting issue, this hard start issue, because had it running yesterday put it on the trailer excuse me put it on a trailer pulled it into town and we had a heck of a time getting it started for the parade um i am going to tighten up uh during our trials and tribulations before the parade kind of got some of our intake hosing a little discombobulated so we're going to tighten that up and then we're going to give you a, a cold start and see if maybe we can't start to sort through this hard starting issue um yeah because i need it to start we we need it to crank and start and not have to hook up jumper cables every single time after it sets or after it's hot or whatever the case may be so fuel's on come over here give it just a touch of throttle about some ignition. We're back. We had to go to the parts store and get a new switch. This one's pretty heavy duty, but I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it just, it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan. So I went and bought a new switch. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and where did I do it? We're going to go ahead and install a relay, just a simple four post relay. Uh, if you go back in some of the videos, it seems like sometimes this thing really wants to fire at the moment you let off of the starter. So you're building two circuits, but in doing so, we're building one really uh, strong circuit. And we're doing it in a way that we're gonna be sure as we continue to troubleshoot some of this stuff that our coil is getting, well, through the ballast resistor, our ballast resistor is getting the best voltage that it can get. Switch on, pretty red light. A little bit of throttle. I knew this. This is one of the most frustrating parts of tinkering with stuff after somebody else has already tinkered with it. And previous owner didn't do anything wrong. Um, they just didn't account for one thing. And I think it's probably what's been complicating our hard start, hot or cold issue since day one. And it was it was giving me hints. It was telling me, hey, as soon as you let off the starter button, I like the fire. Well, hey, folks, I know we got some very smart people that watch our videos. And mechanically savvy individuals. So let's take 
and think back like uh, 70s, 80s, General Motors, or even more specifically, Mopar. All right, because this has, it's a Mopar number, and I believe it's a 12 volt coil on it. So, and I knew this. <laughs> I need another dad snack. Uh, so we're not knocking down 12 volts to 6 volts because of the coil and the points. The points don't care if you have 6 or 12. We're knocking down 12 to about 9 because that's what makes those Mopar ignition coils happy. Now, the problem with that is, again, let's think about Mopars. We've got three or four, four, a lot. We've got them parked around here. To start, when you turn the key on the Mopar, what happens is you bypass the ballast resistor and you give, an, you give straight 12 volts battery voltage to the coil while it's cranking, take it at the fire. And I knew this. And we don't have that. We have a switch that we turn on and we power our coil with battery voltage going through the ballast resistor. When we put the gear shift lever into the start position, it doesn't change that. And as a result, here's what happens. So here we go, same scenario. Ignition on, idle, everything's the same except we're going to have a jumper wire from the positive side of our coil and we're going to give that 12 volts right here and give a little spark because we're giving her a little bit of boost now let's try starting it So, yeah, I'm going to share this with you. It's fairly embarrassing because it's like way mechanics 101. Hey, it's the next day. It's not cold, so this isn't going to be a cold start. It's like 70 degrees, and as soon as I put you guys down, I got to go put the flag back up. It's just a nice little breeze today, but 70 degrees, mostly clear. Just a beautiful day. Uh, anyway, so licked my wounds. Had a couple blue yummies last night. Still a little embarrassed. Still a little perplexed at how I allowed myself to ignore that little bit of electrical information when it comes to ignition circuits. But we're going to fix it right now. Went to the Napa Valley, got us a universal momentary push button switch, and it's even shielded for the weather. Uh, a little long for what we need, but we'll make it work. Um, we're going to wire this up, battery 12 volts on one side, the other side's going to go to the positive side to the coil, and then what we'll do is you'll turn your ignition on, and you'll have to push the uh, it's kind of like kind of like an ether button almost what we'll do is we'll push the button as we manipulate the start switch and it should make fire really well and then as soon as we let off the button it'll just go back to the regulated 9 10 ish volts so the coil won't get overheated as it just runs so 
should be simple fix. We're gonna pull the battery out to make a little room and I'll show you where we end up. And then even though it's not cold, cold, we're gonna cold start this thing and I guarantee it. Mark my words, all of them, it's gonna fire right out of the gate. And while it's cranking, you push. As soon as it starts to take off, you let off and it's good. So, how do we get that to happen? We take battery voltage from the output side of the ammeter and we got a little red wire going over to the momentary switch. And then we have another, we have a little brown wire, excuse me, that comes off and then it's gonna piggyback with the original brown wire that's off of the uh, ballast resistor. And then they're both gonna go down and attach to the positive side of the coil. So, the dark brown wire will have a full 12 volts only when you're pushing the button. The light brown wire or gray, whatever, grayish, brownish, whatever that is, will have the regulated voltage after the ballast resistor the entire time that the ignition switch is on. Guys and gals, the simplest way to ensure that you don't make sparks and fire as you tighten down your positive battery cable, simple. Just do the positive one first. There's no circuit if the ground is hooked up. So it doesn't matter if you touch the body of the tractor or car or whatever you're working on. Okay. So positive side. Now, we'll our negative side. Once again, we'll. I don't see any smoke. I don't smell, smell any smoke. Fuel is on. Ignition is on. Give it just a little bit of throttle. shut it off and just to prove the old theory here we're gonna go just ignition and we're just gonna try it it was just running it should start right back up 